Hello, hello everyone. Hello guys, how are you guys on today? Guess what time it is. Today is story time with Miss Doris. I hope you guys had an awesome, awesome day on last night. I'm so excited to be reading you a book. Today's book we're reading is we continue reading Pinky and Rex and the school play but we are reading chapters four five and six on today i'm so excited to be reading you a story on today and we have our guest which is miss yoli the unicorn hello shikana hello shikavia how are you on today i hope you're having an awesome awesome day on today i'm gonna go ahead on and get started I would like to greet everyone all over the world out there in social media land. I would like to say hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and to some good night. Someone is going to bed somewhere in the world, but guess what? You are just in time for a story time with Ms. Doris. I would like to give a couple of shout outs. Before we get into that story time song, I would like to say hello to Yujima. Hello, Miss Yujima. How are you on today? Hello, Miss Amy. Hello, um, Jamika. Hello, Jamika. How are you and Miss Amy doing on today? You young ladies are awesome and phenomenal. You are doing an awesome, awesome job at what you do. I'd like to say hello to Miss Gloria. Cooper, hello, Miss Gloria. How are you on today? POCC family, hello, guys. Lee Legacy, Moses and Williams Generation, hello, guys. How are you? I appreciate your support on today. Let's see. Women helping women, entrepreneurs, hello, you guys are phenomenal women. All of you guys out there, let's get ready for that story time song. There it goes. Remember, guys, when you're doing that story time song, make sure you are practicing safety first at all times. Story time. It's story time. Story time with Miss Sherry to you. Sing to you. Tell you all just what to do. Sherry to you. Sing to you. Tell you all just what to do. It's story time, story time, story time with Miss. It's story time, story time, story time with Miss. It's story time, story time, story time with Miss. It's story time. I'm so excited to be reading you a book on today. Hello, Royce. Hello, Sophia. How are you guys on today? To show you just what to do. You guys were awesome. What are you having for lunch today? I bet whatever it is, it's really, really, really delicious. I know you're having an awesome lunch. Well, guys, go ahead on. Moms and dads, mamas and papas, have a seat with the children while Miss Doris read you a story on today. Chapter 4 of our chapter book. Punky the monkey. Punky the monkey. She'll read to you, sing to you, tell you all just what to do. What's your name in the play? Pinky's little sister, Amanda, asked diner, asked, asked at dinner, excuse me. It was the night before the big performance. Pinky was really, really nervous. He had already had two glasses of water. I don't have a name, he said. I'm just a monkey. I've got one for you, Amanda said. Chopping a carrot stick. You could change your name to Pinky, from Pinky to Punky. Get it? Punky the monkey? Amanda the panda, said Pinky, not laughing. Cut it out, you two, their father said. Amanda, don't make fun of your brother. He works very hard on this play. Why? Amanda asked. He's only a monkey. 
She's being very, very cruel to her brother. See to you. Pinky could feel a lump growing in his throat. May I be excused, he asked. I don't feel like eating. Sure, his mother said. Maybe you'll be hungry later. Pinky started up the stairs to his bedroom, then changed his mind and went out the front door. He sat down on the stoop and tried to swallow the lump. Tomorrow was going to be the worst day of my life. It was bad enough he had to be a monkey. But his mother had made his, cost his costume out of a leftover Halloween cat costume. It was gray. All the other monkeys were brown. He was a gray cat pretending to be a brown monkey. Hi! Pinky looked up in surprise. Rex was standing at the end of his sidewalk. There he goes, looking really, really sad. And there's his friend Rex at the end of the sidewalk. Oh, hi, he said softly. I, um, I've had this in my room for the past couple of weeks. She walked up to him and handed him the book that had fallen out of his backpack. So, you want to be an actor? Pinky looked at it and snarled. You can keep it, he said. Hello, Royce. Hello, Sophia. I'm glad you're tuning in. I missed you. Rex shook her head. You're the one who wants to be an actor. Yeah, but you're the one who is the actor. I don't care about what you want to do, Pinky. It's been fun. And it'll be all over tomorrow. Are you still going to be mad at me after that? Pinky shook his head. Good, Rex said. Then we can be friends again. Pinky looked up at the book in his hands. He still wished he was playing the big part in the play tomorrow, but Rex's mom was right. It was only a play. Besides, it wasn't Rex's fault. He was a monkey. Hmm, I really didn't make sense. It really didn't make sense that he had been mad at her all this time. We can be friends again now, he said. He paused and added. If you want to be, Rex nodded. If you want to be friends, the two friends smiled at each other. Then Pinky looked back at the book in his hand. Hmm. There's something I wanted to tell you, he said. You are really, really good in the play. Thanks, Rex said. But I'm still worried. I'm going to throw up. Chapter 5, Showtime. The auditorium was buzzing. There must be a million people out there, Stephanie Birch said. Two million, said Tommy McKay, peeking through the break in the curtain. After Mr. Lacey had told everyone less, less than ten times not to peek through the curtains and not to wave and say hi. Hi, Mom. Pinky heard Tommy McKay shout, Hi, Pinky. Are you all set? Pinky looked up at the sound of Mr. Lacey's voice. Your parents did a great job on your costume. The director went on. I'm glad not all the monkeys are brown. That would be pretty, pretty boring. Don't you think? Pinky shrugged. Besides, this way you stand out from the crowd. Pinky hadn't thought about that. Yeah, he said. That's why my mom did it, I guess. Mr. Lacey smiled. He had a great smile. Pinky couldn't help but smiling back. Break a leg, the doctor said. Huh? It's a theater expression. It means good luck. Oh, okay. Thanks. There he goes, standing out from all the other actors in the play. 
Story time. Story time. Mr. Lacey asked his assistant, a fifth grader named Sarah, to call everybody together on stage. The show was going to start in five minutes. Pinky found Rex in the crowd. I'm so thirsty, he told her. But if I get a drink of water now, I'll have to pee in the middle of the play. Oh my goodness, don't get any water then. I'm going to throw up, said Rex. They looked at each other and laughed. Break a leg, Pinky whispered as Sarah helped up the two, held up her two fingers, indicating that everyone should be quiet. You too, Rex whispered back. Pinky made a monkey face and scratched his armpits. Mr. Lacey thanked all of the children for their hard work and reminded them to talk in a big voice. He glanced at Rex and not to look out at the audience. Then he said, show time. And five kids raised their hands to ask if they could go to the bathroom. Pinky could hardly believe it when the play actually began. He knew he wasn't supposed to, but he kept looking out from behind his makeup to find where his family was sitting. He didn't think that, uh-oh, did he think they were there or were they gone? Anybody notice him until he heard Amanda yell, over here, Pinky, over here. From that moment on, he kept his eyes on stage. The play was going much faster than it had in rehearsal. Pinky was having fun. He thought he had even heard people laughing when he ran away with one of the other monkey's bananas. Rex screamed. Rex seemed to be having a good time too. And she was talking in her biggest, biggest voice. Wow, awesome job. Tell you all just what to do. Hurry, hurry, she shouted. Run into the Maloka before it's too late. Pinky sat with his fellow monkeys under the cardboard tree, waiting for the other children to run to the big house. But something was wrong. No one was moving. Pinky could see Mr. Lacey backstage, motioning with his hands for everyone to stand up. But no one else saw him. Rex looked at Pinky with wide, wide eyes that asked, What do I do now? Pinky struggled helplessly. The audience began to cough and whisper. Suddenly, Pinky had an idea. Jumping up so fast, he almost knocked over the cardboard tree, going from one group of children to the next. She'll read to you, say to you, tell you all just what to do. Stand up, stand up. He hissed in the children's ears. In between groups, he scratched and scratched, and the audience laughed at the funny, funny monkey. And the children all stood up. Rex shouted, hurry, hurry, run to the Maloka before it's too late. Everyone ran and the audience broke into applause. Pinky returned to his tree. When he looked backstage, he see Mr. Lacey smiling right at him. It's story time. Story time. Our last chapter, chapter six, a surprise for Pinky. You're the most best monkey, Amanda said, running up to Pinky after the show. Even if you did not look like a you were wonderful. 
his mother said before Amanda could say, Cat. And it looked to me like you saved the show at one point, said his mother. There's the stage chairs. He sure did. Pinky recognized the director's voice after introducing himself to the audience. Mr. Lacey said, your son paid careful attention to everything I said in rehearsal, even though he had only a small, small part. I bet he could have saved the show at any point. He still was the number one actor after all. I think so. Just then Rex and her family came over. Oh, Rex, Amanda cried. You were so good. Are you going to be a movie star when you grow up? No way, said Rex. I'm through with acting. That's too bad, her father said. You were very, very good. I can be good at something and not have to want to do it, can I? Rex asked. Her father looked surprised, but nodded his head. It's just that there's other stuff I'd rather do, like soccer. Amanda thought Rex was crazy not to want to be a movie star. Join us for ice cream celebration, Pinky's father asked Mr. Lacey. I love to, the director said. Let me get my jacket. When he returned, he pulled something out of his pocket. I got this out of the library for you yesterday, Pinky. I thought it might interest you. Pinky looked at the book Mr. Lacey handed him. How to put on a play. I think you have the makings of a director. In fact, I was wondering if you'd like to be my assistant on the next school play. Really, said Pinky? But I, but I thought you had to be in fifth grade. Whoa, uh-oh, he's gonna be an awesome, awesome director's assistant. I'm glad you were in the play after all. Mr. Lacey shook his hand. You just have to have the interest, he told Pinky, and the talent. Pinky beamed. Thanks, he said. Race you to the ice cream store, said Rex. When they got there, everyone made jokes about whether to order the rainforest crumble or the banana split. In the end, Pinky ordered a hot fudge sundae with extra, extra whipped cream. So did Rex, because sometimes best friends just have to have the same thing. The end. This was an awesome, awesome story. Do you guys have a best friend? I bet you do. If you don't, you will eventually as you grow up oh Royce is visiting Nana oh I know he's gonna have an awesome awesome time with Nana but it's okay he'll be able to enjoy the story time when he comes back home with mom have a good day mom while you have a break well guys remember always always wash and sanitize your hands when you're out at play or even if you're in a school play or play with at your friends or at a birthday party or at church and remember if you're not feeling well always always let mom and dad know that you are not feeling well and guess what they will take really 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 good care of you and remember the most important thing we are still practicing safety safety first at all times when you're out in public Make sure that you are wearing your mask. We are still practicing safety, safety first. I enjoyed you guys on today. This was an awesome, awesome story. Whatever you want to do, put your mind to it. And don't let no one change your mind. If you want to play soccer, play soccer. You don't want to play football. Check with mom and dad, though. Let them know your opinion 
and you're doing something what you want to do, something that you're interested in. I love you guys. I hope you're going to have an awesome, awesome, continuous day on this Thursday. Well, I always say, if you're not smiling on today, I hope once you see Miss Doris Noyle that you are smiling. I love all of you guys. Have an awesome, awesome day. Take care.